everybody. Give our God praise. Keep your hands together in the house of the Lord. It's a good thing uh, to give thanks unto the Lord. And we just bless God for another day uh, that he has enabled us one more time to be uh, in the house of worship, in the house of prayer. It's a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord, is it not? Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, on this morning, our scripture reading is going to come from Psalm number 145. Psalm number 145. Uh, and uh, those of you who can and will, I just ask that you stand for the reading of God's word. Psalm number 145. And the word of the Lord says, I will extol thee, my God, O King, and I will bless thy name forever and ever. Every day will I bless thee, and I will praise thy name forever and ever. And in verse 3, it says, Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchable. If you know him to be a great God this morning, put your hands together. We bless you on this morning. Hallelujah. Let us go to God in prayer. Lord, our Father, God, how it is that we thank you once again, Lord. We come, Lord, with thanksgiving in our hearts. We come, God, blessing you for who you are. We thank you, Lord, for another day that you have made. We thank you, God, that you have spared our lives. Yes, and you blessed us, God, to have one more opportunity together uh, in the house of worship. And, and so, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, we ask God that you would make your presence known on today. We thank you, God, for this awesome privilege that we have to be able to come before your throne of grace and, and before your throne of mercy, oh God, and to, to plead the blood. Uh, that is what we plead on today. We stand, oh God, calling upon your name, God, blessing you and thanking you and praising you, oh God, and lifting you up, Lord, because you're worthy to be praised. And God, uh, we pray a special blessing upon the service uh, this morning. We pray, God, that you you would touch in this house, God, like never before. God, that you would move up and down every aisle, God, that you would look upon every heart, God. Our hearts are receptive. And we desire to hear what it is that you have to say to us. Through the leading of your spirit, God, we ask, Lord, in the name of Jesus, God, that you would strengthen in this place today. God, that you would heal and that you would deliver. And God, that you would speak a word through us, oh God, and to us, oh God, that, that we not only hear it and hear, oh God, but it would be made manifest and it would produce fruit, Lord, in our lives so that we can be effective in the things that you have called us to do. Now, God, we ask, Lord, that you would have your way today. Come, move by your power and move by your spirit. God, we desire to worship you in spirit and in truth. And so, God, we ask that you would remove any hindrance, God, anything that would keep us from being able to focus and keep our minds stayed on you, God. We lay aside every weight, God, every sin and every encumbrance. And, and so, God, we just come humbly before you, God. We bow before you and we come, God, with a grateful heart. Now, Lord, as we sing praises unto you, we ask, Lord, that you get the glory. God, you get all the honor and you. Lord, get all the praise. Thank you, God. These things we ask and pray, believe, and consider it already done in the matchless name of Jesus. And we all say it. Amen. 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 This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. That the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And be glad. I will rejoice for he has made 
Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Praise God. If you were on the line Wednesday in our, our Bible uh, study, uh, we had taken the topic flexible faith and asked the question, can we stretch our faith to fit what we face? And I remember at the conclusion of uh, the Bible study, our time on the line, I believed God was yet dealing with me concerning this particular passage. I did not know in what direction he was going to lead, but he did as I was being led uh, right back to this text today. We're going to be coming from a slightly different angle. Um, today, our, our lesson topic is Believe God for This. Believe God for This. And I have this capitalized. Believe God for whatever your this, yes. your right now is. Hallelujah. Yes. Glory to God. And so we're going to go back to John 11. Praise God. Praise God. We're going to move through it swiftly or as the Lord is leading us. Uh, John 11. I want to uh, look at just a few verses, but our, our focus scripture would be verse 40 for today. Praise God. Praise God. John 11 and 38 says, Then Jesus said, deeply moved again, came to the tomb. It was a grave, and a stone lay against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, by this time there will be an owner, for he has been dead four days. Our target scripture today is, Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you? Hallelujah. Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God, verse 41 says, so they took away the stone. Our focus scripture today, Jesus said, didn't I tell you, did I say to you that if you believe, you would see the glory of God. Amen. Believe God for this. Earlier in the text, Mary and Martha sent for Jesus to come to Bethany. Uh, why? Why, did they, why were they sending for him? Because their brother, Lazarus, was ill. Uh, Jesus heard about it and he says, this illness, this what he is experiencing right now, will not lead to his death. Uh, but it is for the glory of God so that the Son of God might be glorified therein. Uh, so instead of Jesus honoring their request to come immediately, uh, we find that Jesus remained there an additional two days. Where he was, they sent for him, he remained two days, and then on the third day, we find on the fourth day, he's making his way uh, to Bethany. But he hears, but he does not move immediately. Uh, says that he remained, he abode an additional two days where he was and uh, then finally left with his disciples going to Bethany. Uh, it's interesting to note that a lot of things uh, occurred before we arrived at verse 38 where we read where Jesus was moved and he, he spoke to them about moving uh, the stone off. A lot of things have occurred uh, starting at verse 1 uh, through verse 37. Uh, first, Jesus was questioned, if you would, uh, by his disciples regarding returning to Judea. Uh, they reminded him that it was on their last visit there that the Jews sought to kill him. Uh, but after uh, inform, being informed that Lazarus, uh, he informed them that Lazarus was only sleeping. Uh, they thought that he was resting. You know, like you and I, we, we take our, our naps and we take our, our sleep for the night. This is what their understanding was. But uh, he was, in fact, dead. Mm -hmm. 
Uh -huh. uh, glory to God. And then Jesus says to them that he was glad that he was not there uh, in order that they, meaning his disciples, those that were with him, uh, in order that they themselves might believe. Oh, yeah. The second thing is that when Jesus arrived, Mary, both Mary and Martha voiced the same sentiment. Lord, if you had been here, our brother would not have died. I notice here that Martha's conversation, uh, the conversation recorded is much more extensive uh, than her sister's uh, Mary. Uh, for Martha stated that even now I know that whatever you ask from God, God will do. Uh, Jesus affirmed that Lazarus would rise again. Uh, Martha uh, understood it as Jesus saying that uh, I know he'll rise again at the resurrection. Uh, but what Jesus was wanting her to recognize is that he was the resurrection. Uh, that he uh, was and is the life. That whosoever believed in him, though he were dead, yet would, uh, would he live. And, and anyone that believed on him, though he were dead, uh, he would rise. And anyone that believed on him would in fact never die. Then he asked her, do you believe this? And so that's where we get our topic from today. Hallelujah. Believe God for this. Uh, she says to him, yes, Lord, I believe. So we've gone through one and two. The third thing here is that there were the Jews. Uh, the Jews that were with Mary and Martha. Uh, they were there consoling them during this hour of their sorrow, their bereavement, if you would. Uh, Jesus, while there, began to show a uh, compassion or display or demonstrate uh, this level of compassion. Uh, but not only that, but he was also troubled in his spirit because he recognized the unbelief that was around him. Uh, not only in that uh, Mary and Martha, not only the Jews, but uh, uh, for uh, mention that of his own disciples. Uh, the text reads that Jesus wept. And it was because of his weeping that some of the Jews surmised the following. Uh, they said, see how he loved him because he was crying. Uh, they, they said among themselves, he must have really, truly loved Lazarus. And, and then there were others who concluded among themselves that could not he, could not this Jesus who opened the eyes of the blind man also have kept this man from dying. It is through the text that it is identified that the disciples, the sisters, the Jews have all displayed some degree of faithlessness. And God used or would use uh, the death of Lazarus to bring them all to a level of faith that would be pleasing unto him. It says that Jesus is taken to the tomb. Uh, we find that it is a cave with a large stone laid against it. Uh -huh. Jesus commanded that the stone be moved from the entrance. And, and here is where I'll pick up, if you will, we'll again pick up on our target of our focus scripture for today. Jesus gave the commandment and uh, 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 Mary, one of the sisters, uh, Jesus said, roll the stone away. But here we have Martha again speaking. That, and she says, by this time, uh, by this time, Jesus, he stinks. Uh, for he's been dead four days. Now, now it's significant, again, that we, we pause here. Maybe you weren't on the line. Uh, you just think that he's just been dead for days, but there's a significance here. The significance is uh, that the Jews believed that the spirit had fully departed from an individual until after the third day. Okay. And so 
Uh, uh, it will stop that, uh, even though they were in a unconscious, uh, in an unconscious place, that they may not really be dead. They could be like in a, a comatized state. Uh, uh, but it was after the third day that they uh, would consider or declare that the individual really was dead. And so that's the significance here, that he was in fact dead. But the thing is, he was dead on day number one. <laughs> day, day two, day two, three, I'm four. And so in order to uh, 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 denounce suspicion, Jesus waited, if you would, until day number four. Glory to God. He wanted, he wanted it, there to be no doubt in anyone's mind that Lazarus was dead and what God was about to do with him and through him was the very act of God. Amen. But Martha says, this is the same one that said earlier, yes, Lord, I believe. Now, at the grave site, she says, after Jesus says, move the stone, she says, Lord, by this time, he stinks. There's an odor. His body has begun to decay. Uh, what she was really saying is, it's too late. Have you ever, have you ever, and you don't have to admit it, but has there ever been a time in your life where you said to God, it's too late now, God. <laughs> God, I, I asked you to, to, to bless me to, with the resources to, to keep the lights on, but God, now I'm in the dark. Mm -hmm. They cut off my lights. God, I, I've asked you, oh God, to, to, to make a way in this particular area, and now He specializes. He specializes. 
God 
place. It's, it's, it's the blessing of God that He's moving us out of our place so that He can put us in the place that He's really called us into. Amen. Amen. Almost did the fall like this. <laughs>
have this great expectation. He does more than we ever expected. <laughs> he goes over and beyond. That's a good, good father. Walgreens and pick up the, the remedy for it, right? But when it's something bigger than that, when it's something that we can't put our hands on, um, when it's something that the world has has made acceptable, but you know God to say that it's incorrect. I just believe God today for healing in the name of Jesus. I stand on his word and I speak it out. I speak it out just as I share with one to you can't play with the devil and you can't be nice to the devil when he comes you say oh no thank you you know i'm reminded of jesus when he went on the mountain and he was there for 40 days when he was fasting the devil approached him and i believe that that was placed in the scriptures for us to know that even if our savior would be directly tempted by satan Satan says, I'll give you all of this if you buy. Jesus said, have you not heard? <laughs> it's, written. it's already been written about me. There's only one true and living God, and he's the only right. one that I should bow to. So when Satan comes, don't play nice with him. He's not nice with us. And his ultimate desire is to steal and to kill and to destroy. And we don't want that. We want to live out all of our days that God has prescribed for us. Amen. Being well, being healed, being whole, being holy, 
because he's holy and he lives inside. So to, today I declare and I decree healing. Say so he can't have my family. He can't have my kids. He can't have my increase. He can't have anything that belongs to me. Because Christ lives on the inside. And today I stand on his word. And I trust him and I love him. And I pray that we would all do the same. In Jesus' name. Anyone else? Or we can go. All right, all right. On next Sunday, uh, we will have our new, um, our September newsletter, as well as calendar. So that will be ready for distribution on next Sunday on the 15th I believe it's the 15th the third Saturday in September we will be at Del Mar Gardens on Parker Road um, that's a Saturday from 1030 to 1130 and we will uh, have service worship and service with those residents with the residents there that's that Saturday next Sunday is communion Sunday it's the first Sunday I'm just as we did on uh, this month, uh, the first Sunday of this month, then we're going to ask again to, to invite, to invite family, to invite friends, to, to invite those who are who don't have a relationship with God, those who do, those who are unchurched, those who, who are not uh, active in a church, to invite them on invitation Sunday. That's what's going to that's if you would, that's going to be our highlight or our, our title, if you would, subject for the first Sundays of the month, Invitation Sunday. All right, and we'll be serving communion on that Sunday as well. Um, also, in the month of September, we're going to again be downtown feeding those who are less fortunate those who are on the streets, those who are homeless, those who are hungry. The Lord blessed us when we gave out 84 bags, counted them, and we didn't walk away from any place or any area without placing a meal in somebody's hand. For that, I give God the praise. I said, I give God the praise for that. I would like for us to, to increase that number because we recognize that 84 was a, a number uh, a need in which it was meant to like first to increase that that number um and so that will be on a sunday um, maybe we'll go for the, the third sunday again um the second sunday today was originally children's stone kingdom kids dr guyton along with the children along with uh, faculty and students from uh, the jennings school district are at Believers Temple, um, Believers Temple Bishop Scott, along with that ministry, they were giving out a um, nice uh, financial gift, and and the administration had to be present in order to receive a monetary gift. So that's where they are, and that's why we did not have the Children's Church today. But Children's Church will be conducted on the second Sunday in September. Um, it's going to be set up a little different in here. The chairs won't be like they are. We're going to have tables and chairs in here. It's going to be set up as a, uh, if you would, learning uh, facility. And that's, this is at the request of Dr. Guy. And so invitations or flyers have been sent out. Invitations will be sent out. I'm a little behind on that, inviting other churches and youth to come. But that's the second Sunday in September. We're yet remembering our, uh, those who are on our prayer list, our mothers. Amen. God is keeping them. You hear me? God is keeping them. Hallelujah. We go and there's not very many occasions where we walk in and visit them that they're not feeling well. They are, they're active. They're moving. They're, they're talking. They're excited. 
They want to know what's going on here, how everybody is doing. And so I'm grateful that for that. I'm, 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 we're thanking God for, for how God has kept them. They're, they're over in their 90s, all three of them now. All over in their 90s. And God is yet sustaining them. Yes, Amen. he is. God is yet building them up and giving them what they need in order to go through. And then all of others, those others that are on our prayer list, we're continuing to pray for and with them as well. The Lord bless you, Mother Della. Amen. We're so happy that you are here today. Blessing us not only with your presence, but your sweet, sweet spirit. I love you. All right, Brother Cleo, been missing him. God's blessed him. I think he said he had to, to bump ride. I don't know how he did it, but thank God for it. Hallelujah. We've been missing you. But we're grateful to God that you are here. We love you. And know we miss you when we don't see you. Amen. Praying much for you. Our, our young men, our young men, our musicians, those working the camera, trusty gentry, the Lord bless you. My sister, Minister Joy Wright, teacher Jeanette Perry, to God be the glory. Amen. To God be the glory Amen. for what great things he has done. Let us all stand. Praise God. We do uh, God be with you. Praise God. God be with you. God.